Tov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are here on Mount Zion, in behind me, the tomb of David, the upper room, the place of the Last Supper that is to be believed where Yeshua actually had his last meal. And of course, in behind all the pomp and fare is the Church of St. James. So it's very much we know that the early church was here on Mount Zion and was considered very important to them. Obadiah records that the, the holy mountain of God, Mount Zion, that there would be those that are drinking upon my holy mountain, masculine plural in the beginning in verse 16 of the singular chapter book. As I mentioned to you, Pope Francis fulfilled that very passage in, uh, during Passover of 2014. And it said, they will continue to drink, Ishatu which is gender inclusive. And the, of course, they've continued to have their masses there either at the upper, in the upper room as well as even in the tomb of David. Last night, as we did our news broadcast, we told you that we would come back and we'd be searching the scripture to see if there is any other prophetic insight that we could share with you in regards to Pope Francis' visit to the United States, speaking to the United Nations as well as Congress. This morning, God revealed one to my wife and as I got here, God revealed a second one to myself. She said, you need to go to the book of Revelation. The first horse rider, he's beginning to ride his horse. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 is being fulfilled right before your eyes. Here on Mount Zion, we saw Obadiah being fulfilled. We're on the verge of Micah. Chapter 4, verses 9, 10, 11, and 12 being fulfilled in the very near future, and the groundwork has already been laid. Micah says that, that we would return to Mount Zion, the Jews would return, and we would be here forevermore. But then he talks about the people being in travail, and he says, why are you in travail? The prophet Micah mentions, and he says, is there no king in thee? Benjamin Netanyahu anointed to be the king. They actually called him King, the king of Israel when he was elected the first time. Is there no king in thee? Because unfortunately, Prime Minister Netanyahu, as good as he tries to do, he just can't deliver Israel from the hand of the Roman occupation. And we are clearly seeing a Roman occupation once again. But even more so, Rome is controlling the entire world. And Jonathan Kahn, Brother Kellen, sent me a video over the night on Skype, he said, look at the video here, and he said, I want you to look this, Jonathan Kahn is sitting down with Sid Roth, just released here on September 20th, interview that Sid Roth did with Jonathan Kahn, he said, notice the part about the crown, the crown being moved. So I fast forwarded into the video, and Jonathan Kahn speaks of the crown of the United States being moved from the U.S. and placed on Russia, the military crown, keep that in mind. Now, we shared with you about six months ago, long before Jonathan Kahn ever even mentioned this, or ever spoke publicly about any of this, that the Pope of Rome has a new warlord. Now, I suggested to you then that it was Russia, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, was his new warlord. Six months before Jonathan Kahn speaks of this publicly, we had already told you that it was Russia that was the new warlord of the world. You're fixing to find out that that also perfectly lines up with Scripture and is another fulfillment of Scripture and yet to about to be fulfilled right before your eyes. Let me share with you some of these Scriptures. And then I'm going to share with you the things that are happening even in the... Uh, I wrote down a little bit of what Pope Francis said at the United Nations that I wanted you to see as well. Something Brother Kellen mentioned to me. He says, it's obvious that you won't be able to buy or sell. Let's first take a look at the scripture that is in light of these things happening. I want to take you to Revelation chapter 6. This is what my wife shared with me this morning. Verse 1 says, Then I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with a voice of a thunder, Come. I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow. And a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. This is what the Pope of Rome is doing right now. Right as he went to the United Nations. He is conquering the world. Now he has a bow, but he has no arrows. He doesn't need any arrows. He conquers with his own word. 
He is the Antichristo. He is that Antichrist that doesn't need this, the, the weapons to do it with. What he says, the people take to heart and they put it into action. Now, we'll go a little bit further into verse 3 here in just a moment, but let me back, let me take you though real quick to prove some of this point here. Um, oh no, let me first finish reading here. After the bow here that he's given says, um, let's look at it again, I'm sorry. Verse 2, I looked and behold a white horse and he was set on him, had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. A crown was given to him. You remember, the United Nations celebrated its 70th anniversary. One of the Vatican websites, as I reported to you before, said there is no president of the United Nations. And they put an exclamation point, letting you know, not as of yet. But there's going to be a crown given. Not only does he have a bow to go forth and conquer, but he's going to be given a crown. Now, some people have said, well, the Pope of Rome has been crowned since the beginning, and this is the crown. This is not really the crown that God is talking about through John the prophet. It's still yet a crown to come. In Revelation 13, we read, And the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. And on, on his horns were ten diadems, and his heads were blasphemous names. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. The dragon, that's Satan. He gave him his power and his great authority. Who has great authority in the earth today? It's no other man than the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis. The dragon gives him his power and great authority. And then it says here in verse 3, I saw one of his heads as it had been slain and his fatal wound was healed. You see, the Roman Catholic Church was nearly not completely out of service many hundreds of years ago, but it did revive, and it's come back stronger than ever. Notice what it says here, though. The fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. Look at the way Pope Francis has been received. He is received as a rock star. He's received greater than a rock star. He's received even according to journalists in America. Fox News reporter actually stated Jesus. They, are, they were blessed to have Jesus in their presence. The Antichristo, the one that is like Christ. The vicar of Christ was what the Pope of Rome claimed, which is a substitute for Yeshua himself. Let's go on a little bit further, though. See, and it says, The whole world was amazed and followed after the beast, and everybody seems to be following him. I know that there's true, genuine saints that are not, and thank God for you. You will be that remnant. And many of you will give your lives for the stand you're taking. He says, saying, Who is like the beast and who is able to wage war with him? There was given him... Excuse, there was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemes and authority to act. Uh, Forty-two months was given to him, and he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those that dwell in heaven. I mentioned to you just recently how that in the humane gospel, Yeshua brings this very thing out. He brings out the one that would blaspheme the name of God, blaspheme the saints, blaspheme those in heaven like no other time ever before. But Yeshua identified him as one that would take up his own name, Jesus' name, Yeshua's name. And he would do these things in the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus. It's exactly who's the one that's going to blaspheme, not some Arab guy. Remember, the Pope of Rome is a descendant of Esau. He isn't actually, he's an Italian. That doesn't mean Italians are all bad people. Neither are all Catholics bad people. God wanted Esau to repent and come back. But Esau's descendants were the ones that destroyed the tabernacle and, and the sanctuary in 70 AD, and, and the Jews were dispersed to all the nations. Titus records this clearly and says, Esau, you stood as aloof as one of them. Why does he say as one of them? Because Hadad, the sole living heir of Esau, became the king of Syria married an Egyptian woman, 
and of course his children all married in amongst the Syrians. This is why there's always been a covenant between Syria and Rome. That's why you see the Red Army, Russia's Red Army in Syria. Pope is going to make sure that he dethrones the United States as being that superpower. As Jonathan Kahn mentioned, the crown was passed, but remember, six months before Jonathan Kahn ever brought this out, we'd already told you that Vatican has a new warlord. God was already revealing these secrets. We go on to read here, though, that's very interesting as we look into this. It says here, they worship the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. So all those that worship the Pope of Rome as if he is God is in essence worshiping the devil. When you follow the God of the dragon, his God is Satan. This is why he says to the people from around the world, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins said, Who is like the beast and who is able to wage war with him? There was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemes. Of course, we just read this. Uh, blasphemes against God to his blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Authority over every tribe, uh, people, and tongue, and nation was given to him. This is the crown friends, he is about to receive. This is what happened at the United Nations. He's given this crown. And he's about to make war with the saints. What saints? Those saints that have stand and oppose Catholicism, the Vatican's elite forces of the earth. He's about to make war with you. And he truly is an antichristo. He truly is trying to be like Christ. He is claims to be for the humanity of the world. Most of his speech looks beautiful. It looks like as he was called by some of the reporters in the United States, he was called the Prince of Peace. But God said there is no peace. Some people have written me and they said, you know, Steve, kind of like the way you speak about the equality for animals, that animals have a right to live. They said he's promoting a vegetarian agenda. But he's a hypocrite because he's not a vegetarian himself. That's something you probably don't know. See, he speaks one thing out of his mouth, but out of the other side, he has a completely different word altogether. He's not Yeshua. He only pretends to be. Now, before I read to you part of what he stated at the United Nations, let me share with you, because I mentioned to you that, yes, he does have a new warlord. And I suggested this to you about six months ago. You can look it up and find the video. I'll try to post the link to that video in the subject line here on this one. But he does have a new warlord, and it is President Putin, the Russian Federation. The Red Army. Look, there's many places. Just look up Red Army. You'll find out Russia is referred to as the Red Army all the way back into the 1920s and forward. They are the new superpower. Where Jonathan Kahn may have got his information? Don't know. Maybe God did reveal these things to him as well, that the crown is being passed. Let me take you back to Revelation 6, though, to show you what's about to be fulfilled. And I'm telling you this before anyone else gets a chance to tell you, so you'll know what's about to be fulfilled. The second horse rider the Lord showed me this morning is about to be fulfilled next. Because the Pope of Rome only has the bow. He doesn't fire the arrows. He's given the crown. He's over all the world, over all the kingdoms, the nations. He's going to make war with the saints. In the name of peace and prosperity, no doubt. Then it says here in verse 3, And when he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse, went out. And to him who sat on it was granted to take peace from the earth and that men would slay one another and great sword was given to him. The red army, the red horse. See, the Pope of Rome is granting the power to Vladimir Putin to take peace from the earth. He's already moved his army into Syria, building a base there. 
Why was he not challenged? Why, is, why did the base get built with no problem whatsoever? You see, the United States has been trying to overthrow Assad, created ISIS, created the refugee crisis, and yet Pope Francis is saying you should welcome them, them in. They are looking for a, a better way of life. He doesn't mention the fact that the United States created the problem. Well, Russia, the Red Army, the Red Horse Rider, is going to help take peace from the earth. Notice Russia is also united with all the Arab nations, Syria, Iran. And of course, Pope Francis, very much working with Vladimir Putin, has already been setting up this entire world scenario, sending in the armies, the, the, the soldiers, the Muslims through all the world. Recently, I got an email from a sister that stated to me, or I believe it was on Facebook, that I forget which, I think it was in Kentucky, that they had brought in thousands of Muslims into Kentucky, and they were mostly men. The displacement of all the Muslims from the Syrian war was done intentionally because they will be some of the Red Army's foot soldiers to bring unrest, to kill Christians, to kill Jews, the true Christians, that is. But you know, the Pope is not worried about taking out those that are his own as well. It's all part of the scheme of things. So you're about to see Scripture fulfill again the second horse rider. The Pope is the one given the crown. He is the king, and you worship Satan when you follow that ideology. That second horse rider, it's not one and the same. It's the Red Army of Russia coming out on the red horse to take away peace from the earth. Let me share with you, Brother Kellen, as he sent me this transcript of the United Nations meeting. I want to share with you something here, that part of what he said here, and point out some very interesting things that they're up, that, the, that he's up, that the Pope of Rome is actually up to. He said, the ecological crisis and large-scale destruction of the biodiversity can threaten the very existence of human species. He goes on to say, the baneful consequence of irresponsible mismanagement of global economy guided only by ambition for wealth and power must serve as a summons to a forthright reflection on man. Well, the United States is the one that is definitely guilty of what he's claiming here. Now, notice he calls it a summons. He's judging the United States. He's talking about redistribution of wealth. What better army for him to use than Russia's army to do this very thing? Because Russia believes in communism, which is equality among all. Of course, not for the elite, and neither will you ever see the Pope of Rome sit back, put on a pair of blue jeans and a t-shirt, and start selling off all the gold to Rome or redistributing the gold of Rome to the poor. No, he won't do that. But he will take and conquer. He goes on to say, to a forthright reflection on man, man is not only on a freedom which he creates for himself. Man does not create himself. He is a spirit and will, but also nature. Creation is compromised. Where we ourselves have the final word. You see, he's taking the place of Christ, telling you that man is only a spirit. And he says, the creation is compromised, and he says, we ourselves have the final word. In other words, he has the final word. But the we brings in, of course, the dragon that we spoke about in the book of Revelation. He goes on to say, where uh, the, the misuse of creation begins when we no longer recognize any instance above ourselves, when we see nothing else but ourselves. Consequently, the defense of the environment and the, and, the, and the fight against inclusion demand that we recognize a moral law written into human nature itself, one which includes the natural di difference between man and woman and absolute respect of life in all its stages and dimensions. He's preparing. He's getting you ready for the battle that he's going to, to order out. And you have to remember, just as NATO has fought the battles for the Vatican, now Russia will fight them. Russia and even China. They call China Red China as well, and of course they're united together as military powers. 
but Russia will lead the battles. He says, without recognition of certain inconsistable natural ethical limits and without the immediate implementation of those pillars of integral human development, the ideal of saving seceding generations from the scourge of war and promoting social progress and better standard of life. Communism is what he's speaking of. In a large freedom risk of becoming unattainable illusions or even worse, idle chatter, which serves as a cover for all kinds of abuse and corruption or for carry out ontological colonization by the imposition of animalists, models and lifestyles which are alien and people identify in the end of irresponsible and in and in the end irresponsible he's given a summons he's judging the united states now i would say one thing again as an antichristo is one that is like christ he is very similar to yeshua but you see yeshua never did thing by never did anything by force he did say that we should have things in common he did say, if your brother has not a coat and you have two, give him one. In the humane gospel, we see the very much of this. We see this in the gospel of the Holy Twelve. And by the way, these are the fragments of the writings that we actually have. The Vatican should release all of its archives. They too hold hidden books that they will never want to reveal to the public. The Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, which the Vatican controlled for 50 years, not allowing the Israelis or anyone else to see them. Why? They didn't want you to know what Jesus really said. But of course, our Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are taken from the Holy Twelve. It's almost word for word the same. But if you really go to read some of these other books, you'll find out that the Vatican, they knew the things that are written, and they're trying to copy Yeshua. But as I said, they never fully copy him. And they're not about to really go against the slaying of animals either. Why? because it's a greater economic powerhouse than oil, the oil reserves of the world themselves. He goes on to say, war is a negation of all rights and dramatic assault on the environment. If we want true integral human development for all, we must work tirelessly to avoid a war between nations and peoples. You see, notice what he's speaking about, a war between nations and peoples. He's really quoting what Yeshua says, nation shall be against nation, kingdom against kingdom. To avoid a war between nations and peoples, and to this and there is a need to ensure the uncontested rule of law, the uncontested rule of law, and tireless recourse to negotiation mediation and arbitration as proposed by the Charter of the United Nations, which consist, uh, constitutes a truly fundamental judicial norm. He's letting you know the United Nation is going to be what rules and governs the world. He's letting you know as well that there must be an uncontested rule of law well, this is what they're doing. They're crowning him. They're going to give him all the power. And don't be surprised if Pope Francis, if he were to be replaced, it doesn't change the whole scenario. The next pope would still be the Antichristo. He would still be the Antichrist. It doesn't change a thing. They only change the crown from one to the other. But nonetheless... You're watching prophecy. Now we're seeing Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, 2, and 3 being fulfilled right before your eyes. Just as we saw here on Mount Zion, Obadiah, verse 16, fulfilled right before your eyes. That has already fulfilled itself. Micah, chapter 4, about to be fulfilled. The Jews will be taken out of parts of Judea, Samaria, and East Jerusalem, and will have to dwell in the fields. Those fields, no doubt, are in the fields around Tel Aviv. I'm Stephen Benoon with your prophetic segment, Israeli News Live. Shalom, and God bless you.